And the next speaker is uh, Bruno Silva. Pathway-dependent effects in the complexation of DNA with pegylated cationic liposomes. Uh, so, uh, good afternoon, everyone. First of all, I would like to thank uh, the organizers, Bjorn and Lars, for the opportunity to be here. It's really a pleasure. Um, so, I am starting my, my research group now at INL, and I'm focusing more on drug and gene delivery systems, and I'm using microfluidic devices to sort of direct self-assembly to control uh, better our structures. But of course, in the beginning, it's always tricky, so I'll he here I will still talk about the work from my postdoc at the uh, University of California, Santa Barbara, with Professor Cyrus Safinia, and also at Lund University with Ulf Olsen. So, this is a, an outline of my talk. Uh, I will talk just a little bit about INL, my institution. This is just a, it's a very recent uh, place. Uh, then I will give a quick uh, introduction to lipoplexus. And then I'll go to my, my past work. And then I'll talk just a little bit about uh, what we are trying to do now, if there is time. So um, INL uh, results from a, um, a joint collaboration between Portugal and Spain to form um, a state-of-the-art uh, research center in the area of nanosciences and nanotechnology. Um, it is because of this collaboration between two countries, it's actually um, really an international uh, uh, place. In, when, when we are inside, we are actually stepping on international territory, which makes it very interesting, for instance, to collaborate with some partners. So the, the core facilities are located in Portugal, more, precise, more precisely here in Braga, which is very close to the ocean and it's also not so far from this very nice uh, natural park. And it's also not far from Porto and an international airport, so you're all welcome to, to visit. Um, so we have main, uh, four main vertical areas of application being health, food, environment, and society, ICT, and energy which are supported by these uh, horizontal capacities that are transversal to most of these, of these uh, vertical areas. For instance, nanofabrication in the clean room, uh, nanomaterial synthesis, uh, advanced microscopy, and so on. For instance, for, for me, it's very nice to have, for instance, a clean room where I can go and try to make my, my microfluidic devices. And uh, the activity started in 2011. Uh, we have a capacity for up to 400 researchers. Currently, we are about 230, so there's still a uh, place to uh, space to grow. So now, talking a little bit about um, lipoplexus. So, as you know, when we try to condense oppositely charged systems, this condensation is mostly driven by the high gain of in entropy due to the release of the of the inorganic counterions. In the case of, of cationic liposome DNA complexes, uh, there's also quite dramatic uh, rearrangements in the, in the structure of our liposomes so we, to, to form new structures. The most common one is this lamellar structure where DNA is sandwiched between the, the cationic bilayers. But there's also other structures like this reverse hexagonal or normal hexagonal or cubic phase. And these structures, for the most part, are controlled by the geometry of the lipids or by the, their curvature, where they want to curve. So if the curvature is approximately zero, there, which is the most common, um, there's a tendency to form these, these lamellar phases. But if the curvature is negative, we have a tendency to form these reverse hexagonal phases and vice versa. DNA does have a, a, something to say, though, when it comes to cubic phases. So because DNA is very rigid, it doesn't like to curve in these, in these channels. So usually you don't get these cubic phases with, with DNA. But you can get them, for instance, with short interference double-stranded RNA, which is these small, small molecules of 21 base pairs. Um, and besides all, all this uh, beauty, what is really relevant is that all these structures have uh, different uh, transfection 
uh, efficiency, so different biological activities. So for instance, uh, our uh, lamellar phases, they are strongly dependent, so the, their transfection efficiency is strongly dependent on the membrane charge density. So it's speculated that for higher membrane charge densities, it's easier to fuse with these endosomes so that the, the particles are released inside the cells. When it comes to the reverse hexagonal phases, which are these points here, we see that transfection efficiency is usually high independent and independent of the, of the membrane charge density. So this doesn't mean that the hexagonal phase is better. I, I agree with Ishital Mon that uh, the lamellar phase is better because we can optimize the transaction efficiency to be as good as the hexagonal phase, and it's also much easier to work with. So it's easier to control their size and all of that. The hexagonal phase is not so easy. Um, and so, so all of these structures have different efficiencies, um, but when it comes to, and, and they can be optimized in vitro, but when it comes to in vivo activity, they, all, they are all pretty bad. So it's what people are using at the moment, they are coating these particles with, with PEG, so basically PEG is supposed to give them some some uh, steric uh, resistance against the absorption of proteins. So their circulation time is much improved. Uh, then people also use these peptide tags or antibodies at the edges of PEG to, to improve targeting of, of specific cells or tissues. And also stimuli responsive uh, functions throughout the particle to, to induce uh, smart release properties. So there's a lot of research in all of this, but the truth is that we still lack um, a lot of much control over many structural features, namely, for instance, in, in aspects like size, number of layers, and polydispersity. And it's more or less about this that I want to talk about here. So uh, I want to talk about pegylated cationic liposome DNA complexation, which is pathway dependent when we do this in brine. So, um, as we saw these two days, um, when, we, when we try to complex, so we, when we use uh, polyelectrolytes, they are quite sticky and also the reduced, uh, the, restricted, the restricted conformations easily give rise to, to, to kinetically trapped states. But is it true when we are using DNA with liposomes? I just said in the beginning that liposomes go through uh, several rearrangements to form these complexes. So uh, in Bjorn's talk yesterday, we already had a hint that when, when, when CTAB is used, uh, we can fall into, into kinetically trapped states. So even though CTAB is supposed to be more or less mobile. Um, so what we want to address here is the question is, when it comes to pegylated cationic liposomes, complexing with uh, DNA, is it pathway dependent under uh, physiologically relevant conditions? So to test this, we try two different assembly pathways. So in one pathway one, we, we mix DNA with cationic liposomes in water, and we add salt after, okay? And path two, we mix DNA with cationic liposomes already in the presence of salt. Okay, so the, 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 this is relevant because these particles are to be used in biomedical applications. So we, we might as well just figure out how it goes in, in, uh, in physiological uh, relevant ionic strengths. Um, and so yeah, we, we are controlling, basically we are controlling the interactions at the moment that we are mixing these two components. In this case, we have strong electrostatics when we mix them. And in this other case, we have weak electrostatics when we, we are mixing them. And I should add here, maybe perhaps this is the most important uh, thing, is that if we look in the literature, we see, we see both of these methods described uh, quite often. So the question is, are they different? 
so here is our experimental design. So we, we tested for different amounts of PEG. So PEG is, is this polymer that we kind of anchor into our bilayers. All the liposomes have PEG. Um, so we test different amounts. We test zero PEG, we test five, and we test 10%. So depending on the amount of PEG, uh, we have different interactions between the PEG chains. And here it's what people call the mushroom regime. The, the separation between PEG is, is, is enough for the, the PEG to coil. And here, 10% is what we call the brush regime. So PEG is very densely packed, so it protrudes more into the solution. And it provides better steric protection. We also check the influence of uh, the membrane charge density. We test high membrane charge density and low membrane charge density. And also the, the, the cationic to anionic charge ratio. And of course, we also test then the, the influence of salt, different salt concentrations, and added before or after the, the complexation. And uh, here, all of, all of the, the materials used are either DOTAP, DOPC, or, or, or the normal PEG lipid. So no special lipids besides, besides those. So here, we have uh, dual fluorescence labeling um, for co-localization, so the lipid has a, a, a red dye, the DNA has a blue dye or green dye, and we check if they are co-localized. If they are co-localized, it means that we, we are forming our complexes. And this is the case almost for all the conditions we tested except, except this one, which is when we use a lot of PEG, low membrane charge density, and 150 millimolar of salt before the complexation. And these are the SACS results. So we did mostly SACS here. Um, so this, these are our SACS curves for the case of no PEG and high membrane charge density. And the black curves are the cases where we, comp where, where we made the complexation in water and added salt after. And as we go up, we increase the amount of salt. And we also try for DMEM, which is a cell culture media. And the orange lines are the ones where we used salt uh, before. And this is a typical pattern for one of these, these particles. Here are the, the lamellar peaks. This peak here is for the DNA spacing. And we see that as we go up in salt concentration, the structure doesn't seem to change much. Of course, there's some minor changes, but overall, it is the same picture. <clears throat> uh, but as we go, for instance, for 10% PEG at high membrane charge, charge density, now we start seeing significant differences. So for the black curves, the complexes that are prepared in water and added salt later, we don't see that many differences. But in the cases where we prepare them in salt, now we see that there's a significant broadening of the, of the main lamellar peaks. So they are still lamellar. It's still the same. It's still the same um, still the same pattern. There's also this shoulder here, which probably indicates oligo, oligo vesicles. Um, but yeah, it's, it's overall the same structure, but the peak is much broader, which indicates a much disordered or looser structure, in a way of speaking. And yeah, so there are still lamellar peaks, but much broader. But when we go to 10% PEG with low membrane charge density, uh, it becomes even worse. So the, now even the, the ones prepared in, uh, in water, they become more affected because the, the, the charge is low now and then there's a lot of PEG. But in the cases where we, we prepare the complexes in, already in salt, when we go to high enough concentrations, it seems that we enter in a new regime, which we interpret as something like this. Our membranes kind of come close because there's some DNA bridging together, but then there's too much PEG in between that we can, the, the, the membranes cannot compress. Um, and it's also important, so both of these states seem to be very stable with time. So several weeks, a couple of months. So before I was just talking very qualitatively, so 
broad peaks loser structure, we can actually interpret, we can actually get a bit more quantitative here. So we can use this, this equation, so it's the Cayet structure factor, including finite size effects, that describes the, this symmetric uh, peak. Um, what is important here is this, uh, I mean, this, this looks difficult, but it's, you, you just put it in MATLAB and it, it, it does it very well. What is important here is, that, is this L here, this, this fitting parameter here, which is the domain size. So basically, it's the length in which our, our, our structure is coherent. So if we know, and we can obtain from the peak this domain size, and if we know our, our lamellar spacing, which we know from the, the position of the, of the lamellar peak, we can get uh, an estimate about the number of layers that we have in our particles. So this is what we do. This is, here's, here's some examples, and we see that for you no know, narrow, lamellar peaks, we have a lot of layers. For, for broad peaks, we, we just have two to three, to three layers. <clears throat> and in some cases, you can have intermediate situations. So uh, here are the results. For no peg, we have always a big number of layers. For 5% um, peg, we can have us an intermediate situation that we never really understood. We have a state with low with small number of layers and a state with a lot of layers. And for 10% peg, we, we have, we have a small number of layers for the, the particles prepared in salt and still a very large number of layers for the particles prepared in water. And for the case of low membrane charge density, it's, it's even worse. So uh, we, we made some, this is a very qualitative description, this just shows, shows a we, we calculated the, the interaction energy considering the compression of PEG and the, the attraction between the oppositely charged membranes, one full of DNA and the other one with positive uh, charges. And basically, there's a repulsion that we have to account to compress PEG. And if we have salt in the moment that we are making the complexation, we decrease our, our attraction, so we get this, this bump here. But this is just a barrier because the, the, the compacted state is always the lowest uh, energy. So if we have our particles formed already, if we add salt, we don't seem to affect them that much. So um, to conclude, uh, so the, yeah, the, um, the structures seem to be very different, uh, whether we, we f or the cases of, of, of pegylated particles whether we, we prepare them in salt or we prepare them in water. Um, and this might have implications for, 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 uh, for transfection efficiency. Uh, we, we don't know that yet, we want to measure. Um, but also what is important to say is that regardless of which one is better, we also have a, we, we have a, we can have a way to, to shape better our particles, which we can maybe use in our advantage. Okay, so now, we are trying to do a little bit the same thing in microfluidics to control better the structure. And um, these are the acknowledgments to these people, and I want to thank you for your attention. <clears throat> Questions? I, I don't know if this is a very relevant for you, but uh, uh, we t uh, had, you know, we wanted to see on uh, nanogels if they were taken up by the macrophages. And uh, then we found, then we have PEG, the concentration of the PEG was not as important as the length of the PEG. So if we increase the PEG length, and have very low concentration, that was very efficient. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I, that's true. I mean, we, we, we kept, we always used uh, PEG 2K. Yeah, I, I because saw those, that. Those, those parameters were kind of used already before I arrived. But yes, if we use longer PEG, we don't need to use as much, as much amount, because you, you get this same Yes, problem. you get the steric in there. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Next question. This is very interesting, the, how Thank the peg, uh, the pegulated uh, mm -hmm. stuff affects the structure. But I have a question regarding the 
effectiveness of the <coughs> regulated uh, material. Mm -hmm. Of course, we use regulated lipids in order to increase the stability with respect to the immune system. Mm -hmm. But as we have shown, uh, the structures may actually be destroyed by contact with, uh, with proteins in the mm -hmm. system. So the, they may not survive even the first contact with blood serum. And uh, so there may be a need to, to increase uh, the transfection rate by, by, by taking other measures in order to <coughs> increase the stability in the presence of all these uh, mm -hmm. other polyelectrolytes that we have in our blood. Mm -hmm. So that's a good question. So uh, two, two points. So we, we did, um, of course, the conditions are different fr from the ones you, you, you described. But we did some measurements, and uh, the, the integrity of our particles seem to last for some time when we, when we incubate them with, with serum. Maybe, maybe some part of them are destroyed, that I cannot say, because in SACS you're looking at uh, you know, big, uh, big volumes. But uh, we seem to, to have the same structure when we incubate them with serum, at least with x-rays. Um, the other one, yes, so when we use PEG, the transfection efficiency goes down because we are uh, reducing the interactions of, of, our, of our particles with the endosomes for them to be released. So that's, that's the other th part that, so PEG by itself seems to improve a lot the circulation time, maybe a couple of days, but it reduces transfection efficiency. So the next step is to functionalize the, the the edges of you know, the distal ends of PEG with better uh, moieties for targeting. Or then use something else. I mean, here we wanted to use also PEG as a model to, to, to make the point. OK, one short question. Yeah. Uh, Bruno, so that you have shown that the lamellar phases are, um, seems to be more efficient for gene transfections uh, for the lipoplexes. Uh, so in vitro, that they can be as efficient as, as uh, the hexagonal ones, but then it's, it, they are a much, a much better platform for, for f to, to continue developing. So do you have any suggestions that what kind of structures in the lipid molecules would lead to the formation of a lamellar phase of the lipoplexus? Uh, yes, so the, overall, the, the, um, this, the, sh the shape of, of the lipid should be approximately cylindrical. So the, the, the area of the head group should match more or less the, the area, the, the area of, of, the, of the tails on the bottom. So it should be balanced. Then if, if there's an imbalance, they, they will have ten a tendency to, to create the, the hexagonal structures. Okay, let us thank the speaker once again. Thank you. Thank you.